Hello, options traders. Welcome, everybody. And I just wanted to do another follow-up based on the Greeks that we talked about last week and to start doing a little bit more of an applied or practical application of Greeks and how you can become better options traders. And the first thing that you absolutely have to do is to get away from the mentality of is the stock going up or down? That's part of it, but it's not all of it. To succeed with options, the most important question is this. Is my option cheap or expensive in terms of volatility? And how do we determine that? Well, let's take a look. To make the point, let's assume that somebody tells you that they've got perfect information. I always like using the crystal ball example because that's how a lot of these websites and books and things that people are always trying to sell you on how they can pick the very best options. They just think that they have this predictive ability and they'll say, well, this stock is going higher. And so let's assume that the crystal ball has perfect information and I'm going to use AutoZone. And let's say it tells us that AutoZone's price is moving higher. Now, it doesn't matter how they got this information. It could be that it's just a gut instinct. Maybe they're looking at Bollinger Bands and seeing it bounce off the lower band. Maybe they're looking at MACD and a crossover point, Stochastics, RSI, Williams Percent R, it doesn't matter. Lots of people, especially new traders, like to look at these and say, here's why I think the stock is going up and I'll buy calls, or why I think it's going to go down and buy puts. But the first thing you have to realize is that everybody has this information. You're not the only one who knows it. It gets factored into the price. So if this was the goose that lays the golden eggs, trust me, they wouldn't give this information away for free on your broker's platforms, and they wouldn't be giving it away free on a million different websites. It's out there. It's in the open. Everybody knows it. And so as an example, assume that you're looking at two upcoming football games. Let's say we've got the Miami Dolphins and the Minnesota Vikings playing. And let's just assume that the crowd feels that the Finns are going to win. That's the overwhelming favored team. Well, that information by itself is really worthless. Why? Because if you take that information to Vegas or to a betting website, and if everybody truly feels that Miami's going to win, there's going to be a point spread. So now it's no longer about winning, it's about by how much. And that's exactly what happens with an option. You have a point spread built into the option, and you need to figure out how likely it is for that option to beat that. And of course, as you get more advanced, you can figure out how to mitigate that. You can even turn it to where it doesn't need any speed at all. But for right now, most people are buying options, and I want you to understand how you can become better by understanding the point spread. So for example, let's take a look at AutoZone. Big day today, trading for 620 down 45 points or about 7%. And let's say that somebody tells you because of this, that, or the other, that the stock is going to go up. Well, hopefully right now, you know off the bat, that's very limited information. It's good for a stock trader, but it's not really enough for an options trader. So let's say we're looking at these options down here that have 10 days till expiration, stocks at 620. Most traders would want to buy something out of the money, try to make those options very cheap. So let's just say they buy this 625 call right here and it's trading for 840. Remember, all of these options are not created equally. Check out your Greeks. They're all different. And one of the things I want everybody to understand is don't look at these quote boards as if they're all just calls or all just puts. And they're all the same and therefore you might as well just buy the cheapest one. That's how everybody looks at them. Instead, you need to realize that each one of these strikes is a tool. And you need to reach for the proper tool depending on your outlook. So hold that thought aside. But right now, let's take a look at how most traders approach it and why they often lose. They buy the 625 call for 840. And in their mind, they're thinking, as long as the stock goes up, I'm going to make money. And that's wrong because it needs to go up fast enough to beat theta. So for example, let's say we have a stock trading for 100 and one trader buys the $90 call trading for $12 and another trader buys the $100 call trading for seven. First thing to take a look at here is that the $90 call has $10 of intrinsic value. That trader has the right to buy shares at 90 when they're worth 100 in the market. That's a real immediate benefit in that option. And therefore, you know it's got to be worth at least 10. And it is. 
trading for 12. So that extra $2 in there is due to time value or extrinsic value. The $100 call, on the other hand, has no intrinsic value. It's an at-the-money option. And therefore, the entire 7 is extrinsic value. So where is the point spread in here? Well, it's always in the extrinsic value. So the $90 call has a two-point spread that he's got to beat. What's the easiest way to see that? Take your $90 strike, add your $12 cost or your premium to it, comes up to 102. That person needs the stock to be at 102 at expiration in order to just break even. And the stock's currently at 100. So he has a two-point spread he's got to beat. He needs two points of intrinsic value to be built in before two points of extrinsic value goes out. What about the 100 call? Add the $100 strike to the $7 premium, 107. Big difference now. That trader needs the stock to get to 107 by expiration just to break even. So let's say the stock goes to 105. The $90 call at expiration would be worth exactly 15. There's no extrinsic value left. It's all gone, but there's 15 points of intrinsic. That's just the difference between the 90 strike and the current 105 stock price. What about the 100 call? It's worth $5 of intrinsic value. So take a look at what happened. The stock actually increased five points. So any option that's in the money definitely gained five points of intrinsic value. Options never lose their intrinsic value provided the stock price stays at that level. They will lose their extrinsic value though. So what happened to our $90 call over here? Well, we know he's going to lose $2 of extrinsic value for sure, but he gained five of intrinsic value. So on a net basis, he gained three. And that's why he could buy the option for 12 and sell it for 15. There's his $3 net gain. What about the $100 call buyer? He also gained $5 of intrinsic value, which is why the call finished at exactly five. However, he lost $7 of extrinsic. So if he lost seven extrinsic and gained five intrinsic, on a net basis, he lost $2. And that's why he paid seven, sold for five, and lost two. So think about it. Both traders thought the stock was going to rise. They were both right yet one gained and one lost. And that's because the second person wasn't correct about the speed at which the stock price would move. Now, the second thing to understand is with volatility. Volatility moves sideways over time. That's important. It's a mathematical measurement, and here is a graph of the VIX, or the volatility index. And it just measures the volatility of the S&P 500 index. You can get similar graphs on individual stocks, and I'll show you some in a minute. But the main point to see is that it just goes sideways. Even though the S&P 500 has been climbing through at least past 2009, was certainly climbing very strongly through there, and yet the volatility just goes sideways. So yes, are there spikes in there? Of course. Are there low points? Of course. But overall, it just goes sideways. So when you're trading options, remember it is not just about up or down. That's part of it. It is also about the speed or how quickly that underlying stock is going to move. And to assess that, you need to understand volatility. Let's take a look at how we can use volatility to make better decisions. So one thing you'll have to do is to find out from your broker's platform or other websites as to what the current volatility is for the stock. Now I'm going to lift this up here on this graph. And this is Options House, now E-Trade. And the orange line is the implied volatility. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But the blue line is the stock volatility. And you can see that it's trading for about 15.3% right now. So how can we use that? Well, as I showed in some of those Greeks videos, this is a really nice calculator at the CBOE. And I can just type in AZO and click on Go. And it will populate the calculator with all of the required fields. Now, do understand that they are using closing prices. Today is 522, and you can see that they are looking at prices as of 521. So we need to use current stock prices. So if the stock price is 620, I'm going to put 620, 
The option we're interested in buying is the 625, and it was the June 1st expiration, 10 days to expiration, for 15.3% volatility. I'm going to leave the interest rate alone, choose Calculate, and it tells me that that option's theoretical value is about $4.23. And once again, what that means is that if you were to buy or sell hundreds of options like this at $4.23, not counting commissions, under these exact conditions, you would just break even. That's why it's called the fair value. Doesn't favor the buyer, doesn't favor the seller. It's a price that's right in between. It's kind of, again, like a point spread saying it's going to equalize that bet. So again, this is why it's wrong when you hear traders saying that option sellers have the advantage or that option buyers have the advantage. They have differences, but they do not have advantages at least all of the time. Okay, so now we see that the option is theoretically worth $4.23, assuming the current stock price volatility of 15.3%. But the option was trading for $8.40 in the market. So what volatility is the market using to come up with a price of $8.40? Well, I could use kind of a hunt and peck method here. I could just keep trying different volatilities until this number became 840. But there's a little shortcut I can use down here in what's called the implied volatility calculator. And what I do is I come down to this blank box and I type in the options current market price, which was $8.40. Choose from the drop down menu, it's a call. If it was a put, we would just choose put. And I select calculate and it tells me 25.72 is the volatility that the market is using. What does that mean? Well, it means if I come over here and I change this to 25.72, I should get the current options price. And there it is, 840. So again, this is called the implied volatility. It's not the volatility that the stock is trading at. It's the volatility that the market is assuming is going to take place over the next 10 days of this options life and therefore would be a better assessment of value. Now we've got something. See, I can't just look at this and say 840 is cheap or 840 is expensive. I don't know. But what I can do is I can say that the market is pricing it at 25.72% and I can now compare it to historic volatility and see if that makes sense. It would be a little bit like saying there's a seven point spread on this football game. How many times are football games won by seven points? If it never happens, well, then we'd say that's a big spread. If it happens all the time and quite easily, we'd say, well, that's probably a low spread. That's how you can compare if it's high or low. You can't just look at a number or an options price and say whether it's a good deal or not. We always have to look in terms of volatility. So now why is this important? Well, watch what can happen. You bought this call option thinking the stock was going to go up. And let's say it does go up. I'm going to be generous and say it goes up 10 points to 630. However, it's not instantaneous, right? If it was instantaneous, yes, it'd be worth 13 and a half and you'd make a lot of money. But chances are it's going to be over time, let's say over five days, so we only have five days remaining. That changes things. That brings it down to 10. But let's also say more importantly that that volatility takes a hit and starts moving towards its long-term average. What was that number? Yeah, it was 15.3. So let's just say maybe it goes to 18%. And there's 825. And look at that. You lost money. You paid 840. The stock went up 10 points. And you're going, why did I lose money? Because it didn't go up instantaneously. You lost some to theta. But you also lost some to vega. A lot to vega. And people don't understand that. So we always have to say, how high is high? How big is the current volatility or the implied volatility compared to the historic? And that's why a good options platform will show you the implied volatility versus the historic volatility. So here in E-Trade, you can see that this orange line here is the implied volatility, and the current level is 31.4. It's essentially an at-the-money option. They look at a couple of strikes in and out and look at an average but roughly the at-the-money options are trading for about 31.4% volatility. However, the stock itself is trading at about 15.3% volatility. And so think about it, if you buy an option 
and you're paying at a rate of 31.4% volatility, but you're only tied to a stock that's generating 15.3% volatility, what it means is that that stock is going to be very unlikely to generate enough volatility to pump in enough intrinsic value to compensate for this very high options price. So going back to the football bet, it would be like taking a seven point spread, which might be fairly small for a football game, but taking it on a hockey team, in which case now it's an enormous point spread. And that's what's happening. And so good platforms will show you the relative differences of the implied volatility versus the historic, and that's why they do it. Another thing you could do is to say, if I'm going to pay 31.4% volatility, what has this stock traded at over the past year? Well, you can see the high has been about 40% volatility. Not often, but we touched it here and here a couple of times briefly. Quickly fell back to the mean, though. And the low has been down here at about 25. So we're not super high. We're not super low. We're somewhere in the middle compared to where implied volatility normally trades. But look at how low the historic is. And so this is what you have to look at. It's not a question of whether options are cheap or expensive. It's a question of how much volatility you're paying and how much volatility you're getting. And the only way to do that is to understand volatility and how it relates to your Greeks. For those who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course at optionsa to z.com, or you can also instant message me here in Facebook.